I love painting my Skaven miniatures, really taking my time on the heroes, and overall putting the effort in to try to make all the units look nice, whatever that means for me. But I am terrified of taking them to tournaments. My brother is a pretty avid tournament player, and it seems like his army kind of always gets a little banged up at the tournaments. I think overall the players don't really move the models by their base or their sleeves snag on a spear or something. Paint gets rubbed off, pieces get broken, and in an effort to spend more time with my brother and also get to play more Warhammer, I've been meaning to attend more events in the future and compete in tournaments. However, seeing the condition that some of the armies get left in kind of makes me scared for my Skaven. In an effort to avoid that, I thought I'd paint up a whole new army that focuses on tournament play. Nothing like competitive or, you know, super hardcore, but more so just I want to pick an army scheme that I could paint really quickly and something that still looks cool. This is a cool opportunity also because I've been meaning to get a little more artful with how I approach my Warhammer. Add some of like the style and boldness from digital illustration and see how it could apply to miniatures. So I think I landed on a really cool scheme. I start off with a black prime and then airbrush signal blue over that. Um, I pretty much do like an all over coat, but also really focus on like the nooks and cracks, spots like under the arm um, that could have been missed by the primer, making sure we have an all over color. The signal blue is really cool. It's a deep blue and when it dries over the black primer, it has somewhat of a purple hue to it, which works really well with the gory red I then airbrush on from above. And there's a lot of armies out there. Um, I feel like doing like a duo toned or like a contrasting lighting situation on your armies was really popular, um, especially around the time when Curse City was coming out. A lot of really cool YouTubers were doing it. Um, but I was kind of thinking that instead of having like a two lighting source situation, I was really gonna focus on one really warm spotlight. I was really inspired by like Western American landscape paintings. A lot of them feature a really prominent lighting source, usually the sun. It's really warm and piercing and it creates a ton of environment. And I wanted to see if I could capture this on the Warhammer miniatures to sort of create a bunch of drama in the paint scheme, going from like a really nice saturated red to this deeper, more dark purple color. So I pretty much pick one spot of the Theradons, usually like a shoulder pad and a head, um, or on the banner, I also focused on the top icon there, and I use Mephiston Red. This is like a really saturated cardinal red color that is really punchy compared to the gory red and the signal blue, really kind of elevates the look and creates that nice lighting situation that I was looking for. Sort of a warm spotlight or beam of, you know, red sunlight is right on them. It creates a bunch of drama in the model and I think it's really cool. I wanted to still use electric blue, but to pick out a detail instead of using it as a under light or some sort of contrasting light situation. So on this, I went for their axes. I went really slow. For some reason, the electric blue seems to really speckle a lot when I put it through my airbrush. I'm also not the best airbrusher in the world, so I went super slow and just tried to really build up a sort of glow on the axes. Um, and then also on my knights, to vary up the army a little bit. I didn't want everything to have that exact same like weapon glow and I figured a variety would be good for a scheme like this. So on them I have some little mushrooms on their bases that I built using milliput and just wire. Um, so I hit those with the electric blue kind of to create a little glowing mushroom on the base. I think this helps create some contrast, um, not only on the model but amongst the army and I think that'll go a long way with a scheme like this. Once the airbrushing's out of the way, I then switch over to polished gold and I dry brush this 
on that Mephiston red area. I like this because it really emphasizes that idea of like this warm light or sunbeam hitting them and also helps to pick out some of the details. I went slowly with this making sure I didn't, you know, overdo it. I didn't want to cover the entire Mephiston red area, but I really just wanted to emphasize that lighting situation that I've established. I also made the executive decision to kind of dry brush gold. One of the horns that's more dominated by the lighting. Um, this might not necessarily actually be gold, but I thought it looked appropriate for these minis and horns can be gold. Once the dry brushing was done, I then went back in with a brush and kind of picked out some of the details on the shoulder pads, that crisp edge. All of them also have nose rings and I thought that would really help create a little visual movement and accent to their face because, you know, right now it's all red. So went in and hit the nose ring and I think that really helps it. I think this is a really successful paint job. I feel confident in how they look. I had a ton of fun painting them and I'm super stoked with the result, especially compared to the amount of effort that went into it. It was a really fun experience, but really only took like one session of painting to complete a unit. Um, and I think they look great. I think they look really cool. They're dynamic and moody. There's a lot of drama in them with the lighting situation we've done. Also red's my favorite color, so it's about time I just like dunk some all over a bunch of minis. <laughs> and I don't know, I think the best part is, is that they look good enough to where it won't be lame to roll up to an army with these guys. And also if I end up rubbing a little paint off, I can just respray it on. There's no huge worry there. There's no complicated layering I'll have to replicate again to order to, you know, fix a mistake really just bust out the airbrush. Um, that being said, I'm probably gonna varnish the crap out of these dudes. Um, and yeah, and I hopefully they can sort of be beefy enough to withstand some, some tournament play. Really my biggest takeaway is that we don't have to paint every little bit and bob on a mini to, for it to be finished or for it to feel complete. Like something like this that is hyper stylized and sort of exaggerated still looks really cool to me. I also know that like really airbrush heavy paint jobs are a little unaccessible to people that might not have an airbrush. So I do think that you could also achieve results like this with rattle cans. I actually put down all the base coats on like the Nurgle Dawnbringers with rattle cans. This is different. It's not like quite as moody as the Theradons and Knights, but I do plan on adding more paint to these guys, so I wasn't going for like that huge range of contrast, but I think it's a good example to show that you can do something with rattle cans. There's definitely more speckling with rattle cans, so that's something to keep an eye out for, but overall it's a super fun way to just saturate your models with paint and do something dynamic and cool. Thanks for watching.